because they want everyone to remember it. QPR is for the mind, and it stands for question, persuade, and response. Or refer, sorry. Question, persuade, and refer. So we're going to be talking about um, suicide and kind of how to be able to assess maybe someone who is struggling. Um, I recognize that there might be triggers for some people in this room, so if you feel like you are being triggered, then that's okay to go ahead and go, okay? But I would actually like you to check in with Lexi for you. I brought Lexi with me because Professor Riggs told me that I would have to click people if they added late, and I didn't want to be trying to watch who was adding late and doing this at the same time. So anyway, um, Lexi's just gonna kind of come hang out and help me with this. So question, persuade, refer. Out of curiosity, how many of you have been impacted in some way by suicide? Okay, statistically, four out of 10 have. I find on our campus, there's a lot more than that. Um, one of the things to be aware of, I don't know if some of you are in the place I was, when I first got this job about a year and a half ago, I have a cousin who died by suicide. I also have someone close to me who struggled with suicide ideation. If you're not familiar with that term, it's, having thoughts of taking their own life on a consistent basis. And even though I had people who were close to me who had that particular struggle, I truly, I just did not understand how dying was better than even the worst circumstances in living. And I felt like to do this job, I really needed a better understanding. So I had a counselor who um, referred me to some different places of people sharing their story. And one of my takeaways from that was simply this. Suicide is not the problem. So if you know someone who says, I'm struggling with thoughts of suicide, that's not the problem. That is their answer to whatever the other problem is. And usually that problem has made them feel so hopeless and so I think just can't see a way out. And so their way out is suicide. So please recognize that when you are dealing with someone who is struggling with suicide, they need like the utmost compassion and they need an understanding ear and an understanding heart. So be very careful that you're not judging them and reacting to them. We're gonna talk some more about this. So let me just keep going because we want to out here on time, right? Okay, QPR is not intended to be a form of counseling or treatment. If you took a CPR class, you would not be a heart surgeon. And if you take this QPR, you're not gonna be a counselor. It is simply intended for you to know how to offer hope to those who are struggling and to take some form of a positive action. So, out of curiosity, I wanna know how many of you have maybe heard these myths, because they're common, like I hear them all over. No one can stop suicide. Once someone's made up their mind, it's just inevitable. Have any of you ever heard that? Yeah, that is completely a myth. The truth of the matter is, if people are in crisis, and remember that I said they're feeling hopeless. So if you can offer them a form of hope, then you can prevent a suicide. So, and, and the other statistic is that once people have been able to get that hope, if they can stay in a mentally well place, then suicide's not gonna be a problem for them. So literally you can save a life by getting them the help that they need. Um, how many of you have ever had this fear of, if I ask someone about suicide, it's only gonna make them mad. Like I don't dare talk to someone, I don't wanna ask them. Um, another time, another, I don't know if this one will pop up, but um, I had a friend who was worried that her son was thinking of suicide. And she called me because she knew I had this job and she's like, I don't know what to do. I am so worried about him. And I said, well, have you asked him about it? And she's like, no, because I don't want to plant that idea in his mind. That's also a myth. I'm pretty sure it's on here. I just realized it. I think I've done this. Um, 
We're gonna come back to this one, but I wanna finish the thought that I had. If you ask someone about suicide, they are either already thinking about it or they're not. And you asking, that's not gonna cause them to, to make that a consideration. Um, uh, working in the counseling center, one of the things that I wanna do, so I work at the front desk. So if someone came in, chances are it will be me at the desk. And lots of times they'll come in and they don't necessarily say that they need help or they might need, I, just, I need to see a counselor. But I don't want to have anyone go out the door if we don't have a counselor available right then who might be at risk for suicide. So one of the questions that I will always try and ask is, are there any concerns with suicide? I have never had anyone get angry. I have usually had either one of two reactions. Either they will be like, no, no, that's not a concern for me. Or they will be like, okay, now I can finally talk about it. And you can literally see them, the relief that they have. So if you're worried about someone, ask them. Um, I only know of one story where someone got angry and it wasn't actually in our office. I don't know if any of you know Christine Hanks at the business building. Um, she had a student come in and, and share with her that they were struggling. And um, in the end, they, they got angry. But she said as they were standing there yelling at her, all she could think of was, I am so grateful that they are here to yell at me. And she's like, I didn't know what to say. So I finally just said that. I got up and I gave him a hug and I said, I'm so glad you're here to yell at me. And she said, they just kind of like stopped and recognized that she truly cared about them and then they, they thanked her for doing that hard thing. So know that you asking, you are not gonna plant that idea in their mind and that if, even if they're angry, it is better to have them here with us than the alternative. So sometimes asking about it takes a little bit of bravery. Okay, one of the myths is only the experts can prevent suicide. Have you heard that? I'm not a counselor, I'm not a doctor, I can't do anything about it. Okay, that might be what some people think, but the truth of the matter is, suicide over a lifetime will probably affect every one of us in some way or another. Whether it's by knowing someone or going to a mentally dark place yourself. And so, just know that it's everybody's business and we want to reach out and help each other. Okay, couple more myths. Um, suicidal people keep the plans to themselves. Statistically, seven out of 10 people will give us clues beforehand that they are struggling with suicide. Part of what we're gonna talk about today is what those clues are so that you guys know how to figure them out. That means three out of 10 may not say anything. So if you've been impacted by someone who's died by suicide, I don't want you to feel guilty. They may be one of the three who didn't say anything. But because seven out of 10 do say something, I want to give you the knowledge so that you have the opportunity and the, the know-how to be able to change, literally save someone's life. Okay, um, here's another myth I hear a lot. Well, they're always talking about it. If they're talking about it, I don't have to worry, right? Because they won't do anything. Have any of you ever heard that? The fact is, people who talk about suicide, lots of times that is like their last cry for hope. Like, will someone listen to me? Will they hear me? Does anyone care enough to say something? So if you hear someone talking about suicide, that's a big one. Like, ask them questions. Okay. Another myth is once a person decides to attempt, there's not really anything they can do about it because they've already made up their mind. That's a myth. Remember, I, I kind of said this, but I'm gonna keep beating it because it really is a key factor. People who struggle with suicide have lost hope. If you can help them find hope, if you can refer them to a resource, if you can offer hope to them, then they won't. So offer them hope. Okay, 
here's what you're going to kind of be watching for. Here are some of the clues and warnings. And the more things that you see or hear, the more serious the risk is. Yes. Okay. I also heard once that a lot of the times when they do commit suicide, it's because they're on the way up from where they were so they could see how far they were down. Have you ever heard that before? I have not heard that. Um, I have heard when it comes to addictions and people who relapse with addictions, sometimes they will be really high and then maybe they relapse. Think about it. You ever try to change a habit? How hard is it to change a habit? Sometimes I think that we don't help people who are fighting an addiction, or maybe we ourselves don't understand that when you have, I mean, that's like a huge habit that they're trying to change, but it's an addiction. And so some, it's common for them to relapse, but sometimes they feel like, I had it. You know, maybe I was clean for two years, and now I've just relapsed, and I am never, I'm never gonna be able to give this up. When they hit that point, then they may be more likely to pursue suicide. That might be something that's possible. But I've never heard like when they're on their way up, so I don't know. I, I'm not saying it's not true, that's just not something I have heard. But I know with an addiction and someone who's been able to beat it for a little bit, sometimes that really does put them at risk. So, okay. Sometimes these people who are struggling, they will give you direct, direct clues. Sometimes they might say something like, I've decided to kill myself, or I wish I were dead, or they will actually say, I'm going to commit suicide. Like, I, I figured it out, I'm just gonna commit suicide. Maybe they will say, I'm gonna end it all. Or, if I don't pass this test, if I don't get this, I'm just gonna kill myself. Okay, now here's a challenge. Sometimes I think we say this, just being flippant. I mean, I, I have to admit that I probably myself have said something like that, like, if I just don't get this, I'm just, I'm done. Maybe we need to watch our language more carefully. So if you're someone, if, if you're noticing that maybe you're saying some of these just not in seriousness, then I challenge you to change your language. And if you do hear someone say this, even if you think they're joking, recognize this is like a serious clue. Like stop and ask them. And, and it's okay to say, okay, I think you're joking, but I just wanna make sure, like are you really thinking about suicide? And, and let them know that. So, so kind of a double challenge there. Listen for it and be careful not to use it yourself. Um, I also think sometimes anxiety, like I got served a mission and I had a companion that was, that was suicidal. I think sometimes they don't always say it. It's not always bold enough to say, oh, I'm going to go do this. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they're there thinking about death a lot. Um, like you'd say, oh, like, I wonder what would happen if I just stepped out of this bus type thing, or like something like that. And they're like thinking about different situations that they could do that. Yeah. I think that's also a very... Okay, so you just went right into the next slide. That was awesome. That oh, is sorry. indirect clues. No, that's great. I'm glad because that shows you how experienced and you know what you're listening for. So that's a good thing. So that I'm gonna step in front of a bus, or not, even if they're not saying that I'm going to, but like, like have you ever thought of? Or have you ever, like I remember being in a car with someone once and I was the passenger, so I was a little nervous when they were like, have you ever thought like what would happen if you just drove over and the other lane in front of a car? I'm like, okay, well, let's talk about this. First of all, <laughs> you know, is this something I should be concerned about as a passenger in your car? And, and it actually led to a conversation that, that I didn't realize my friend had been struggling. And she wasn't necessarily to the point of suicide yet, but she was having some thoughts now and again. So so be aware, when you hear people say something like that, definitely like ask them about it. Um, if you hear them, I'm just gonna put all of these up and we can kind of go through them. But if you hear them say like, I am tired of life, I just don't wanna do this anymore. Or my family would be better off without me. So I had an experience, um, here on campus, I was doing one of these for the um, faculty and staff. And someone who knew that I was going to be doing it later the day, I ran to their office and she's like, hey, so I saw the email that said that you're gonna be doing this. And I just wanna share with you my story. And 
she talked about how at one point in her life she was going through a divorce that was really ugly she was from a small town both she and her soon-to-be ex were um her parents were also his parents from there um it had kind of turned into one of those things where everybody in the town thought they knew what was going on and all the gossip and they her kids were getting all this crap at school and she truly felt like her family would be better off without her. She just felt like if I removed myself from this situation, the gossip would go away. It would be better for my family. My kids won't have this impact. And it was actually a student here at Snow that was brave enough to reach out to her and say, are you okay? And she was like, of course I'm okay, I'm fine. She was like, well, I really don't think you're okay. She's like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine, I'm okay. She's like, look, I'm, I don't know you well, but I know you and I don't think you're okay. And she said, that's what it took for me to realize and admit that I wasn't okay. And she totally credits that student with saving her life. So I just want you guys to know that really this knowledge is power and I encourage you to not just be here for the extra credit, but to use it, to, to make it a part of what you listen for and, and what you do. Um, sometimes you might hear something like, who cares if I'm dead anyways? Nobody cares about me, who cares? Or I just want out, I'm so done with this, I am finished. Or sometimes it might be something subtle like, you know what, you don't really need to worry about that because I'm not gonna be around much longer. And sometimes they'll just say it in passing and they go right on to something else. So listen for these. Um, same thing kind of with pretty soon you won't have to worry about it. Okay, so we talked about sometimes they'll give you a direct clue, sometimes they'll give you an indirect clue, and sometimes it's their behavior. If they have had any previous attempts with suicide, so, so if they've attempted before and they can get help and they get to a healthy place, lots of times it really is never a concern again. But for those people who have already been there and already had a plan and they start to slide and go back to that dark place again, statistics show that they will attempt suicide sooner than someone who's never had those thoughts before. So just knowing that someone has, has struggled with suicide before, recognize that, I don't know that there's really a timeline, but if we use the factor of a week, if it took a normal person a week, it might only take them a day. Does that make sense? So not that there's a true timeline, but just know it will happen faster for them. So that's just something to be aware of. If they have a means, and a means means a way that they're gonna do it. So if they're like, I'm just gonna shoot myself, if that's their plan and they have a gun, that's a problem. If their plan is I'm just gonna take pills and sleep forever and they start stockpiling pills, that's a problem. If they're talking about stepping out into a road and they're walking down a busy street frequently, that's a problem. So just know that if there's a way, if, they're, if they have a means that they've talked about, that is a behavioral clue. Um, if they have co-occurring depression, moodiness, or just seem hopeless, that hopeless factor truly is like a big thing. Um, if they start putting their personal affairs in order, if you have someone who's a huge gamer who comes up to you and is like, so I just want you to have this. You know, I really admire you. I'm thankful for you. I just want you to have this. And you know that that's important to them. Why? Why do you want me to have this? Um, I don't know if you guys have grandparents. The two demographics that are the highest on suicide are college-age students that 17 to 24 and the older generation like 70 plus because a lot of times for them they start having health problems the older they get maybe they don't see family as much because everybody's kind of busy with their own life maybe they feel like a burden to someone and so they really think their family would be better off without them so if you were to go visit your grandparents and they're like if anything happens to me I have my will and everything in this drawer. That's a concern. Ask them about it. So anything that they're doing that might be putting their personal affairs in order. 
Okay, so here's a few more behavior clues. We already talked about the giving away prized possessions. If they have a sudden interest or disinterest in religion, if it's someone who's always been a religious person and suddenly they don't want to talk about God, that might be a clue. Or if it's the opposite, if they've never been interested in religion and then suddenly they are, that's a problem. One of the saddest stories that I heard was from a mom who said she was fixing, I don't remember, she was doing something in the kitchen, like fixing dinner, she was doing something in the kitchen. And her 10 year old child came home from school and he said, mom, do you think there's a place in heaven for a kid like me? She said, of course there's a place in heaven for a kid like me. You know, you're a great kid. Why wouldn't there be a place in heaven for you? Said, yeah, definitely. 10 minutes later, he had gotten his dad's gun and killed himself. And she said, she goes, I felt when he asked me, it was a weird question because we weren't a religious family. But she didn't know this. So again, I would just emphasize, remember these things. Remember that you're listening for things that they might say, whether it's direct or indirect. You're listening for these behavioral clues. You're watching for them. I guess you wouldn't hear them necessarily, but you're, you're listening. Um, and again, we've kind of talked about this. If they have drug or alcohol abuse and then they relapse, that is often a big struggle. Um, if they're angry or irritable and that's not their normal personality and you can't figure out what's going on, it may be that they are struggling with something that is an underlying issue that could lead them to contemplate suicide. So ask about it. Um, if they're tired, you know what? I think life is just harder when you're tired. So if you know that someone's been struggling and they haven't had a lot of sleep, and lots of times, I don't know if you guys know this, if you guys have talked about it in class, but often when someone has depression or anxiety, it affects your sleep patterns. So it is almost like they go hand in hand that if you have depression or anxiety and your sleep patterns start getting off, often your thoughts might turn to suicide just because you're not in your best mind. Okay, so, so watch that one too. That's a behavior to watch. Okay, there might be situations. Um, I'm gonna list all these too. Oh, except that I didn't mean to, I wanna go back. Okay, so if someone's been fired or expelled from school or a loss of a scholarship, that's one that we hear on campus here a lot. Um, this is a recent unwanted move, but sometimes even if it's wanted, lots of times when students leave home for the first time and they're all excited about college and they get here and it's harder than they thought. And sometimes it becomes a struggle for them. So this is unwanted. I would probably say more, it's a move. Like it's a big move, whether it was wanted or not. Um, any loss of a major relationship. So being away from home for the first time, or having a boyfriend or girlfriend break up with you, or maybe having parents go through a divorce. Anything that could be a loss, a death like someone dies, any loss of a major relationship can be um, a struggle. And that increases especially if they have died by suicide. If whoever that loss is, if they have died by suicide, then know that, again, like the people who've attempted before, that they go through that faster. Same thing if they've had someone close to them die by suicide, they seem to get to that dark thinking place faster. So just be aware of that. Okay, um, lots of times too, if they've been diagnosed with a terminal illness, if they feel like I'm gonna die anyway, I would just rather control it. So know that that might be something. Um, if they have uh, lots of freedom, if they're, you know, this could be prison, but what are other losses of freedom that you guys can think of? Paralysis. Oh, big one. Yeah, that's a good one. I think sometimes even if you lose a scholarship or a financial support when you're here at school, that doesn't give you the freedoms maybe that you thought you had to pursue the career you want or something like that. Um, oh, and then I didn't realize this. They did was financial security. So I guess those kind of fit together. Okay, um, often also if they have the loss of someone that, again, they're really close to, whether it be a therapist, a counselor, a teacher, a roommate, you know, whoever that might be. 
And then sometimes if they're here of becoming that burden to other people. Okay, so the first thing you have to do, if you're seeing these signs and you're hearing them say things and you're watching them and they seem like they're struggling and they're, maybe they're looking depressed, maybe they're looking angry, then here are some tips for asking questions. Um, you know what, I can't remember how many of these go down, but I'm gonna try to list them. Okay, so first of all, if you're wondering, don't wait, just ask. Don't be like, well, I'll wait till tomorrow, we'll see how things are then. Just ask. Um, if they're reluctant, like that story that I gave you of the gal that's here on campus, if they're like, no, no, I, I'm fine. Be that person who's like, are you sure you're fine? Because you seem like you're struggling. Like, be persistent with that. Um, always talk to them in a private setting. You know, like if you had a roommate that's struggling, getting the whole room together and asking them in front of everyone or the whole apartment, that's not the best thing. So go to a private setting. When this says allow them to talk freely, I think a huge component of that is don't judge them. If they admit they're struggling, remember this is a person who's lost hope and they need your compassion, not your judgment. Um, maybe behind a mask it's harder to tell, but one of the things I want you to remember is communication is 80% nonverbal. So for just a second, I'm going to take off my mask because if Lexi were to say to me, you know, if I'm like, hey Lexi, are you doing okay? And she's like, yeah, actually, I'm, I'm not. In fact, I kind of am thinking about ending my life. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah, that might be heavy, but what did I just do? I totally judged her. Did you see it on my face? So if someone shares that with you, like, make sure that you're not judging them, that you truly care about them. If someone tells you they're struggling and they get a, versus a, oh man, what can I do to help you? Those two reactions are completely different and you just, you can use the same words and still say different things. Make sure you're body language and your tone of your voice that there's just no judgment okay um okay give them plenty of time if you guys were i don't know if you went home for the weekend and you're on your way back to snow and you come across a huge accident in i don't know chester do you guys go the nephi way if you're going home okay so let's say you come across this big accident and you and you go over to help them and someone, I don't know, they damaged their leg and they're bleeding out and you're putting pressure on it and calling 911 and doing everything. You know, let's say it's a Monday morning. I remember last year we had a really bad snow day and a lot of people who've gotten home for the weekend were struggling to get back. So let's say that's your scenario and you're going, man, I gotta be to class in 10 minutes and I'm gonna be way late. You're probably not gonna leave them and say, you know what, I called 911, just hold this really tight on your leg, they should, on your leg. They should be here soon, right? And it's the same thing. If you know someone who's struggling and you're in that conversation, give them your time. I don't think you're gonna have a professor or a boss or anyone who's gonna feel like what you needed to do in that minute was more important than the life that you could be saving. So give them your time. Um, okay, let me see. Okay, so this talks about having resources handy and I, um, I'm going to let Lexi hand you a, so there's a QPR thing, which will have a booklet. If you don't want this booklet, that's okay. You won't offend it. They, they're they kind of pricey. So if you want it, I encourage you to take one because it will have everything we've talked about today. If you don't want one, that's fine. Um, we do have Hope to the Counseling Center website. Um, a thing about suicide that goes over a lot of what this is. So if you just feel like you need a refresher to know, that's fine too. But the QPR booklets, yeah, there's two of them, they're both the same. Oh, and then my cards. I wanted to also give you my cards. So go ahead and take those too. Yeah. Um, just in case you feel like you were not brave enough to ask that question, I'm giving you my cards so that you can say, well, let's call her or bring them to see us or something in that way. So, or, or if you're struggling yourself, that you will know how to get in touch with us. But um, have your resources handy. So, um, remember what, exactly what that says. 
how you ask the question is far less important than that you are asking about it. So ask them. If you feel like someone's struggling, just ask them. Okay, um, there are a couple ways to ask. Sometimes you can take a less direct approach. Maybe it's something like, you know, you just don't seem like yourself. How are you doing? You just seem like you've been so unhappy. Are you really okay? You know, are you unhappy enough that you are considering taking your life? Like really, and, and if it's something that you're thinking, okay, that's still too direct for me, then maybe something like, do you ever wish you could go to sleep and never wake up? That will get them talking. And then sometimes that leads into a more direct approach. Sometimes, sometimes people are really good at sidestepping the question. So sometimes you need to be direct. And for some people it fits with their personality. And, and so this is another way of asking. Um, to say something like, you know what, when people are as upset as you are, they sometimes wish they were dead. I'm just wondering if you feel that way too. Or you're looking kind of miserable these days. Are you thinking about suicide? Um, okay, remember when I said you can ask the same thing, but depending on how you ask it, it shows judgment? This is one of those situations. If I say, are you thinking about killing yourself? Like, you wouldn't really think about killing yourself, right? What are the chances they're going to say yes? But if you're like, you know, I'm really worried about it. Are you thinking about killing yourself? That's totally different. So be careful that your tone and the message that you're sending to them while you're asking. Okay, um, so ways not to ask the question. Some of these I just did. But I want to especially point out to the last one because if you tell someone, if you're like, well, suicide's a dumb idea. You're not thinking of suicide, right? Okay, first of all, remember, suicide's not the problem. It's the solution to whatever they feel is hopeless. So if you're like, well, you wouldn't do anything stupid, would you? To them, it's not stupid because that's the answer to getting them out of that problem. So don't use that one, okay? Um, okay, once you've had a conversation, maybe they've told you that they're struggling, then you want to persuade them to stay alive. Um, one of the most powerful things that I had, oh, I need that one, please, can I say? Okay, um, we had a wellness advocate that worked with us last year, a student like you guys, who came from a very abusive background. Um, she, and I checked with her, she said I could share the story, and she actually shared it also at our, our suicide prevention activity last year, so I don't know if some of you were there and heard that, but she said, because of her abusive background, which included a lot of different forms of abuse. She hit that hopeless place. She had tried telling people at school, like she had told her teacher, teacher didn't believe her, the abuse increased at home. She told, um, she called family services or DCFS. They came and did a home inspection. Her parents were very good, relied their way through that, but then retaliated on her. And she just felt like chances of me living to ever move away from home, like is not gonna happen and I'm just done. And so she did attempt to take her life. And when she was in um, a behavior help unit, she said, I had a counselor who asked me, you told me all these reasons you'd wanna die, but what do you wanna live for? Like, I had never thought of that because I honestly did not think I would live to be 18 and get out of my house. She went on to talk about how grateful she was that her attempted suicide, that she did not actually die because of the things that she's been able to do since then. When you're talking with someone, give them reasons to stay alive. Even if the only reason that you can give them is, I would miss you. You matter to me. I would have a problem if you weren't here. Even the most basic reasons can give someone a reason to live. Okay, 
Again, you're listening to their problem. You're giving them their full attention. You're remembering that suicide is not the problem and you're not judging them. Okay, you're offering them hope. That is your role, to offer them hope. Okay, so then ask them, will you go with me to help? Will you go with me? Let's go find someone who can help us. What are some resources on campus that you can take people to? If you knew someone was struggling, where would you go get? You guys gotta answer fast because we're trying to get done quick, right? <laughs> really, where would you go? Well, I mean, I think I'm going to counseling all the time. I'm not sure where, yeah, where that is. Yeah, the counseling center would be a great place. Okay, that's a good question. You know what? We used to be right across the hall. Okay. So currently, we are over, if you know where the business building is, you would have to walk down the street when you get to the science building, cross, go past the Badger Playground, and to the end of that block, mm -hmm. and we're like kitty corner. So we're just right behind the business building. Okay. And it is totally fine if you bring them in. Like I said, chances are I'll be at the desk, or one of our wellness advocates will be at the desk. You can totally come in and say, hey, I am here with my friend and we need some help. So the counseling center is a great resource. What are some other places you can go? Mm. Okay, if you guys really aren't sure, then get those QPR booklets out and write this on the back. Okay, good. So some other resources on campus besides the counseling office. You can go to Student Life. Um, you can go to their advisors. Their academic advisors can do it. Um, if you're really concerned, you can call campus security. Lots of times people are like, the police, no, no, call the police. Campus security officers are awesome. And they actually help the counseling center with this a lot. They understand this concept of it's just someone who's lost hope and they can help you get the resources. So if it's a weekend or something when they're not home, when, when we're not open, call campus security. Um, another one that you can take them to is we have a hospital in Mount Pleasant. If you need to take them to the ER room, sometimes people will freak out of that because they're like, I don't know how I would pay for it. Okay, well, first of all, IHC is a nonprofit and they will work with them. And second of all, the people who love them, I'm pretty sure would rather pay a bill for a many years than have them gone. So you can take them to an emergency room. Um, another thing that I would do, if you guys don't already have the SAFE app on your phone, please download SAFE app, the SAFE Utah app. I know you've probably heard that pushed in high school, but there is a feature on it that I'm finding a lot of people don't know about. And that is, um, there is someone on the other side of that app 24 seven. So if you call it, say, hey, I'm here with a friend who's struggling with suicide. This is what the situation is. What do you think we should do? Or they can, you can chat with them. If you'd rather text, you can text with them. Sometimes at three in the morning, um, when you find someone in a dark place and you're like, I don't even know what resources are available, Safe Utah has the ability to be able to get a hold of people on our campus that will help. So that Safe Utah app is a great resource. I would also encourage you wherever you're from, you know, wherever home is, find some resources at home in case you have someone from home who's struggling. Okay, um, another thing, sometimes the best thing to do once you've asked the questions, you've determined they're struggling, take them somewhere to get help. But if they won't go, then ask them, will you let me get help? Will you let me call the counseling center? Because we will send someone, okay? Will you let me take you to the emergency room? Will you let me, will you let me get help? Um, another option is, this is not the best, but it's a better option than not having help at all. It's getting a promise from them. Will you promise me that you will not hurt yourself? until I have found help. Most of the time, remember, they're, they're feeling hopeless. And by you telling them, we're gonna figure this out, we're gonna find help, that offers them the hope they need. And statistically, majority of the time, they will keep that promise. So, okay, um, your willingness to listen and help can give them that hope that makes all the difference. Okay, we have got two minutes. I'm pretty much just gonna skip. So then, one thing that you know, um, 
just so you know, you're not the one, you're not a counselor, and this can be a really heavy burden. So I encourage you to find someone to help you. And since almost all efforts to give someone hope, to get them help, are met with like relief and appreciation, um, don't hesitate. Don't be scared of it. One of the things that we would have done if I hadn't had such a hard time getting us off, um, we would have given you a chance to practice with each other. I, sometimes saying the words, are you contemplating suicide? Are there any concerns with suicide? Getting those to come out without feeling totally awkward can be way difficult. And as silly as it sounds, I'd encourage you to go home and say it in the mirror. Because sometimes just saying it will make it easier to say when you need to say it. Okay, um, really quick, any questions? Before the end, I just wanna make sure I haven't forgotten anything. Okay, any questions for me in the last minute? Nope. Well, if you have any questions that you think of later, or if you have someone that you feel like would need services to help them out of a dark place, please reach out to me. Because I truly, I really do care about our students and our staff. I want you guys to have a great experience. I want everyone who's here. So, um, just know the Counseling Center is a resource and Oh, nobody, not even me, said Professor Riggs. He would be a great resource too if you're trying to figure out how to get a hold of someone. And I think you guys have like contact info for him. So anyway, that's the end. And if you have questions later, you're welcome to reach out to me. I hope you have a great day.